Good evening, everyone, from Veterans Stadium. Welcome to Phillies baseball. Final game of the series, the Phils and the New York Mets. Another hot one here at the Vet today. Harry Callis with Chris Wheeler and Larry Anderson. And the season is half over. 81 games have been played, 81 more to be played, and the Phillies are showing signs of coming around offensively, Wheels. And Larry Bow would hope so, Harry. You know, this is a time of the year pitchers don't want to be out on the mound on these brutally hot days and nights, so your offense you can really score some runs and do some things. Their problem is, as you see their rankings, first in doubles, but not real good in runs. Uh, they just haven't produced runs the way that you have to do to consistently win games. Bobby Abreu has really picked it up. Pat Burrell has been a star this year. Uh, he has really come into his own 20 home runs already, and a guy who looks like he's ready to take over leadership of this of this ball club and this franchise eventually. But when you get right down to it, and Larry Boa uses the word all the time, so I'll just use what he says, inconsistent. And that's the problem right now. I mean, they'll score 12 runs, 13 runs, and then they'll go four or five days and score a total of maybe 10 runs. So it hasn't been a consistent offense. Sometimes the numbers look a little bit better than they are. All he wants the rest of the way is to try and get a little more consistent. Starting pitching L.A. has been coming around of late, but still the numbers aren't real good for the first 81 games. So a lot of that came from that first month of April. The starters really struggled with the exception of Vicente Padilla. Now they're not very high up in the rankings in pitching, and pitching is the name of the game in baseball, obviously. But the starters, the area of 434, has gotten much better. I think 17 out of their last 25 starts have been quality starts, so it's really coming around. The bullpen has really been the problem area. A lot of wild pitches and hit batters. But the guy that stands out amongst them all is Vicente Padilla. Uh, probably a little, I won't say upset, but wished he would have made that all-star team. I think a lot of us felt he should have. He has been solid. Jose Mesa out of the bullpen has really been the only guy in that bullpen with the consistency that Larry Bow has been looking for. But hopefully they can all get consistent and win some more games. The pitching matchup for the final game of this series. Randy Wolf on the mound for the Phils. Jeff D'Amico pitching for the New York Mets. The temperature on the carpet down in the field, 120 plus degrees. We'll be back with the starting lineups right after these messages. Fonzo is already headed back to the dugout to get the bat boy to bring one out for him. He gets that right off the label. Bites it off just foul. The first base runner of the game for the Mets is Roger Cedeno after Randy Wolf had retired nine in a row. Tries to come back in. Oh, it was a cut fastball or a slider. Just didn't get it in quite enough. Alfonso, the batter. Edgardo pop to first baseman Tomas Perez his first time up. Tomas had a little trouble with it, one of those towering pop ups. Swing and a miss at a good change up. 0 and 1. down in Atlanta tonight. The Expos have to come up here. And that's good to make them wait around a little bit and better to make Armas pitch. They are underway and in the second inning and it's one to nothing Expos. Randy Wolf at 50 pitches with all those three two counts. At a zero 30 and 20. One and one to Alfonso. 
strike on the outside corner. He gets ahead of him one and two. Several collectible 2001 Phil's jerseys with the American flag commemorating 9-1-1 will be offered in a silent auction on Friday night from 5.30 to 9. All proceeds will benefit Phillies Charities Incorporated. For more details, call Gene Diaz, Phillies Community Relations Department, 215-952-8216. That's 215-952-8216. Gene Diaz. Fouled back by Alfonso. The Fourth of July sign, USA Rocks. It feels like the Fourth of July holiday tonight. That's right behind home plate, that MLB looking in logo with stars and stripes on it. Yeah, put that down there today, looks great. Good job by the ground crew. Here we go again, a ball and two strikes. High two and two. Sedano showed no signs of running. He's stolen 12 bases in 16 attempts. Doesn't go again and another 3 2 count. And he's gotten away with this so far tonight as he missed with a changeup. But sooner or later, there will be trouble, and there's trouble on deck, Piazza. See if Sedeno runs here. And Wolf and Lieberthal trying to get together on a pitch. You'd think he would run. Yeah. I agree. He goes. And it's ball four. Two on and nobody out for Piazza. Who grounded the second his first time up. So no base runners the first three. You get to the fourth inning. The first two are on. And the heart of the order. Move on to follow. And then Jay Payton, there's Mo on deck. How about that ball catching him last inning? Wow. <laughs> he didn't know he even had that. No what idea. Bullet hit by Jimmy Rollins. That ball caught him. He didn't oh, catch it. Absolutely caught him. And he'd admit it. And Mike Piazza, the batter now. Big early spot in the game for Randy Wolf. Marlon Anderson reminds him about Sedano at second. Sedano less likely to run with nobody out than he would with one. But if you completely forget about him, he could take off. Piazza takes a big, slow breaking ball for strike one. Tim McClellan come around. I'm sure he's asking him if he wants some time right off the shoulder. Mike Piazza will give him a little time too as he steps out of the box. And it's one of those, boy, I'm glad that you, not me, swings. Yep. So Randy's ahead of him, 0 2. Coming inside, and he missed the spot and fouled away. Into the upper deck right side. Looked like he Lieberthal was set up in. He was. He didn't get the ball there. That's situation there. Lieberthal, that first curveball he threw him was what 68 miles an hour. It's almost like Piazza was just saying, I'm not going to get out in front of something. That he can hit the ball so deep in the strike zone and hit it out, you know, the other way. It's it's amazing. Yeah, he waits. He really can wait. Gets jammed there though, and that ball is playable. Scott Rowland in foul territory, one out as they got the pitch inside that time and got him to pop up. That's right, just with talking about wheels, you're talking about a hitter that can wait. And you leave it out in the zone, he can hit that ball out, but you get it on his hands and you wait, like you try to do there, and they can't do much with it. And Mo Vaughn will bat. He struck out on a 3-2 breaking ball his first time up. 
That was a, the beginning of the five straight three two counts that Randy Wolf ran and got them all out four of them on strikeouts. Now you really have to pay attention to Sedano with one out. He has a huge lead at second. And, and Jimmy Rollins just took a couple steps in. Vaughn takes strike one on the outside corner. You really have to wait on Tim McClellan too. He's very deliberate behind the plate. I think what some of these umpires do is they call it verbally where the hitter and catcher can hear it. But nobody else does. And then he stands up and makes the sign. Big tall guy McClellan longtime American League umpire. Outside with a breaking ball one and one. He is of the guys from the American League. Now they're all merged into one. But of the guys in the American League he's. Ben known over there is one of the better balls and strike guys. He lays off that high breaking ball to his mow and it's two and one. Close to the pitch he struck him out on that might have been a slider. Two and two. All right, pitching coach. Where do you go now? I go back to that breaking ball. He was late on that. Yep. Doesn't mean he'll be late on another one. They say he's really been handling the fastball a lot better in this hot streak he's in. That's it, unless you throw a fastball in on him. Breaking ball, and he fouled it off. Well, they came back with that curveball, and Mo Vaughn got a piece of it. This one, a bigger breaking ball than the one he missed with, just gets the top of it. Struck him out. Two outs, a huge strikeout for Randy Wolf, and now he has to go get Jay Payton. Two big outs back to back. High fastball after the low breaking ball, and he just doesn't catch up to it. I don't know what he could have done with that one, Andy. As strong as he Not is, much. I mean, even if you, <laughs> be pretty tough to get on top of that pitch. Now Peyton can be a very tough out. He struck out on a, I think it was a changeup. He had a 3-2 changeup he struck yep. out on. There are the runners at second base, Sedania with great speed, and Alfonso at first, but now two outs. Peyton to right field off the end of the bat. Bobby Abreu coming in, and he makes the play. Great job by Randy Wolf. First two batters get on, and he gets through two big boys and a dangerous hitter in Jay Peyton. Still one nothing fills. Girl the batter. Single to left scored the Phillies run in the second inning. And at the halfway mark last night with 20 home runs and 59 runs batted in. Gets a breaking ball from D'Amico. He's throwing a lot of fastballs tonight. And you know, you, you know his best pitch is his curveball, at least when he's pitching well it is. Maybe first time through, I don't know. We'll see. Outside. Now this is where after the Phillies, uh, the Mets had the first two guys on. And you go through Piazza, Bond, and Payton, and you get them out without scoring. This is where you really like to turn around and put some points on the board. Really get some momentum going. Foul away. Off the facing of the upper deck and down into the stands. Burrow get a good swing at a fastball. Are you surprised how many fastballs Domingo's throwing? Yeah, he did. Uh, Three right handers in a row in that last inning. We're not in a row. Burl rolling and then Anderson got jammed, but then a fastball to Lieberthal. All three base hits and hit hard. You know, his numbers aren't so great right now. Maybe he's having trouble with his curveball. Because the first two months of the season, this guy was lights yeah. out. He pitched great for them. There's a breaking ball, look like, or a change up and a Curve swing ball. and a miss. Struck him out, one out. One of those kind of starts inside. 
the Triumphant Glory Series presented by Viagra, Sildenafil, Citrate. We'll feature the Phillies wearing period Phillies uniforms, plus all fans receive a free Phillies painter's cap Sunday, July the 21st. Step up to the plate and ask your doctor if a free sample is right for you. To learn more, visit Viagra.com. Phillies and the Braves, 215-463-1000. There's a breaking ball for a strike. You can order your tickets anytime online at phillies.com. Stop by the Phillies ticket office, the Pennsylvania Convention Center. That's the Braves, Friday, July 19th through Sunday, the 21st. Scott singled in the hole his first time up. There's that old P right there. That's the one the Phillies started out in right here in 1971 in this ballpark. That was the logo. 50 pitches for D'Amico, a good ratio. I think the Phillies had gone to that uniform maybe the year before. I'm not sure, but they definitely had it here when the season opened. The one ball, two strikes now on Scott Rowland with one out and nobody on base here in the fourth inning. Miko throws that big hook and misses two and two. Fastball, curveball, changeup from Jeff D'Amico, born in St. Petersburg, Florida, makes his home now in Pinellas Park, which is about halfway between Clearwater and St. Pete. Fly ball left field. Sedania waits, puts it away, two outs. Come to baseball, hot dogs, and apple pie event this Friday, July the 5th from 1 to 6 at FDR Park across from the vet, a part of the Welcome America festivities. The event is free. It will feature great food, carnival games, a hot air balloon, vintage fire engines, little league games, and a celebrity softball game featuring you, Larry Anderson, Dickie Knowles, Dallas Green, and the Fanatic, among others. Donations gathered at the event will benefit the Hero Scholarship Fund for the families of fallen police, fire, and EMT workers. I'd be better off in that little league game. After the event, come on over for the Phils game and the best fireworks show in town. Phillies and the Expos. FDNY, Fire Department of New York. What great significance that has now. Really? Think you'll get a hit in that softball game? No. Well, I got another question for you. If you get it, who's going to run for you? I'll be thrown out. <laughs> There's no chance of you getting that bag safely, no. huh? No. One ball and one strike. To Marlin. Sounds like a lot of fun over there in FDR Park, right across from the near the vet here from one to six on Friday. Marlin pops one foul out of play. The count one and two. He popped up on a tremendous play by Joe McEwing with two on and nobody out in the second inning. The Phillies might have had a big inning. Ewing playing at second for Alomar tonight. Got a great jump on a jammer and ran it down down the right field line. Whoop. John Valentin, the shortstop, thought that was a strike. He was on his way off the field, called a ball, and it's two and two. <laughs> Curveball, lace to right. Burnitz is there. Three up and three down, no runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left for through four. Fireworks game number one. Final game of the series. One nothing fills. <laughs> Time now for tonight's Citizens Bank. Not your typical fan. Each game will scan the crowd, find a fan or fans who set themselves apart from the rest. A lot to choose from here. Wolfpack's gonna get this. Not your typical fan for the seasonal costumes and plus being in those masks in the heat up there. Can't be fun tonight. Not your typical fans. The Wolf Pack brought to you by Citizens Bank. Not your typical bank. Randy Wolf with a one hit shutout to this point. John Valentin, the shortstop. And he jumps at an off speed pitch and pops it up to Scott Rowland in foul territory. And Randy gets an out on one pitch, and that is huge in this heat. So that they can keep him around for a while tonight. First pitch change up had him way out in front. Valentin playing short for Adonis, and I guess they figured D'Amico's more of a fly ball pitcher, and they're going for a little more offense, sacrificing defense because they're both right handed batters. There is the acrobatic Ray Ordonez. 
Only left-handed hitter in the lineup tonight is Jeremy Burnett. He ran a 3-2 count and then locked on a 3-2 hook. Phillies with a full defense on him, playing over towards right center is Ricky Lede. There you see him. Jeremy takes a breaking ball for strike one. Foul, a fastball off Mike Lieberthal. He's getting peppered back there tonight. And Tim McClellan, a little professional courtesy, takes a walk to the mound with a new baseball. I'll let him shake it off. Boy, it's hot back there tonight, obviously. The um, pl home plate umpire and the catcher with those masks. And you get the chest protector, you put that on that. That thing, thing's like it's a suction cup on your chest. And you get your bell rung like that. 0 oh 2. Drop down with a fastball and miss. 1 and 2. Randy with five strikeouts and one walk. Here's the 1 2. Missed again, two and two. The on deck batter is Joe McEwing. Bats him from the right side. Larry Ball cannot get into a game tonight where he has to make a lot of moves because he's short on the bench. Travis Lee is out with an injured shoulder from last night. He's day to day. It's like he's thinking about that right now. See that shot of Bo. Jeremy Giambi obviously cannot play or he would have played first base tonight. So he's really down to two extra men and then you consider Todd Pratt the third who's the backup catcher so that eliminates him in a lot of ways. But Boa needs a well pitched game and a lead tonight where he doesn't have to make moves. You can't go to your backup catcher. I mean you rarely see a manager use a backup catcher when your club only has two catchers. Just in case something was to happen to your second catcher. You're out of luck. We see Todd Pratt. Burnett sets it high in the air to center field. Lede going way back at the wall and makes the play as Burnett's got a fastball to hit and gave it a long ride, two outs. Live your Major League Fantasy. Join guys like Larry Anderson, John Cruck, Mitch Williams, skipper Mitch Williams, Dallas Green, Greg Luzinski, and many more for the ultimate baseball trip. January 29th, February 2nd, 2003 in Clearwater. Premier accommodations, your own authentic Phillies uniform, top-notch instruction, and plenty of fun. 610-520-3400. You must be 30 years of age or older, and you must be willing to have a great time. Because you will. Ewing struck out his first time up. Get a swing and a fastball there and fouls it back. Joe Bristol. Native. Finally got a chance to play a few years ago with the Cardinals. He's made the most of it. Scrappy player, come very versatile, play a lot of positions. Check swing. That's a fair ball rolling. Got it. Tomas Perez got <laughs> back down on the bag somehow, some way. A spectacular 5-3 to end the inning. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left. Look at this play we're going to go out on. one nothing fills. He is fun to watch. Rolling Joe McEwing, a little check swing down the third baseline, a high throw. Tomas Perez shows some ups there and comes right back down on the bag, and a good call by Chuck Merriweather who said he just got it. Boy, what a play. Good stretch and right back down there. I mean, Scott had a throw on the run, made it a high throw, and Tomas just got his toe on there. It looked like Nuriev. He was a ballet dancer, right? Yeah. Not a hockey player, but Nuriev, yeah. Brishnikov. Brishnikov, one of those guys. Breaking ball line to center. Peyton misjudged it, and he can't make the play. Peyton went back and forth on that one, and that ball bounced in front of him and somehow he caught it and it didn't get by him. Oh, uh, he was very fortunate. He lucky he didn't get that as you would say in the squash. Really? It's almost like look how deep he starts off there and then he stops. And then he turns his head and the ball finds his glove. 
That's got triple written all over it, not inside the Parker with Lieberthal. Watch, he turns his head and just puts that glove where he thinks it's going to be. Really hard to believe that ball didn't get by him and go all the way to the wall. But he made some play after he originally did not make a good play at all. But even on Tomas Perez, look how deep he is. Yeah. Burnett's deep and right. That's where Tomas Perez will kind of maybe look for the hole on the right side as those outfielders are real deep. There you see them. Wow. Big hole on the right side for Tomas, batting ninth and eighth tonight. Playing at first base with Travis Lee, a late scratch with a sore shoulder and day to day. Travis was in the original lineup, and then when he got to the ballpark today, he was having trouble with that sh shoulder. Went in, saw Jeff Cooper, the Phillies trainer, and then Larry Ball was informed that he couldn't play. So he called Tomas into the office and said, Go get that other glove. Tomas says, Okay, whatever. Popped him up. McEwing, Peyton, Peyton all the way, one out. This Sunday, the Expos will be here, the final game of the homestand, right before the All-Star break, and celebrate the end of the July 4th holiday with a Phil's game. Fans 14 and under receive a free Phillies card pack, compliments of Acme and Oreo. Great day to spend with family and friends. 215-463-1000, anytime online at phillies.com. That's Sunday, the team pack from Acme and Oreo. Randy Wolf will probably be up there to punt. See if he can get Lieberthal to second. Yeah. Not easy sometimes to bunt a catcher over. So we'll see if they have him bunt or swing away here. Well, he's got to bunt this ball down the first baseline. A third baseman down the line, and the bunt is out in front of the plate. And it's a good one. Piazza is going to have to field it. Flip to Joe McEwing. So sack number five on the year for Randy Wolf scored 2-4, and into scoring position with two outs is Mike Lieberthal. He gets the job done on the third base side here. The ball doesn't leave the dirt, but he deadens it well. He shows bunt, pulls it back, then he deadens it right in the dirt. Piazza got out there pretty good. Throw to McEwing. Ricky Lede, who's lined out and single to right. He's hit it hard twice tonight. And John Bukovic trying to get Mike Lieberthal off second. He says Lieberthal gives him a good walking lead and gives him a chance to score him a lot of times, even though he doesn't run all that well. And a breaking ball to Ricky is low ball one. Jimmy Rollins on deck. This is just like the game D'Amico and Padilla hooked up on. Phillies won that four to nothing. And it was one to nothing when D'Amico departed. And yep. then David Weathers came in and Pat Burrell hit a three run homer off him to make the final four to nothing. Another breaking ball and misses two and oh. So they have done very little with Big Daddy this year as the Mets call D'Amico. Former number one pick of Milwaukee back in June of 93. He was the 23rd pick overall that year. Three and up. Well, Ricky will take a look down there at John Vukovic, see if he gets a green light. Rollins on deck. Vuka might not give in here three and oh with that base open. He did. He threw him a high fastball and a swing and a miss as Lede had the green light. Today is a dead fastball hitter and loves to hit the heat. And he's been swinging a lot better on breaking balls and changeups since he's gotten a chance to play. Doesn't handle the fastball up that well, as you can see with that fastball. Yeah, he's a typical low fastball hitter from the left side. And that's the pitch he can really handle. And you can see he's gotten a lot better on all speed pitches since he's gotten some at bats lately. 
And another high fastball, and he swings and misses. Well, this right here, probably ball five. It's up and out of the zone. Pop-up foul, third base side. Alfonso near the stands and runs out of room. Almost hit Vince Piazza down there and Vince and Mike's mom in the club box of the Mets. These fans scramble for it. There's Vince. He, <laughs> he had a shot at that. Doesn't catch quite as well as his son. <laughs> Nor does he need a baseball that bad. No. Three and two. Look out. Wicked foul down the first baseline. Tony Scott ducks and bounce in and out of the stands. And hopefully everybody's okay down there. Well, the difference between the other pitch is a high fastball and this one. Gets down low, you see him turn on it. He can handle that ball, belt belt high and, and lower, thigh high. And yeah, that's his pitch. A he's a fastball hitter, and like most left-handed hitters, a low fastball hitter. Three and two. Breaking ball fouled off. It's amazing, Andy, what can happen when you do get a chance to play. I mean, Ricky Lede, when he come up as a pinch hitter, it was tough. I mean, he. he See three pitches a lot of times that he'd be gone, but now he even fights off tough pitches. Yep, it's a big difference. I mean, it's all about getting in a groove. It's the same thing coming out of the pen when you, you know, you pitch once a week. It makes it tough. And Jason There's Michael has done a great job coming off the bench for a guy that didn't get a chance to play much. Larry's trying to get him out there a little bit. Now. Here we go again, three and two to Lede. Breaking ball, and he struck him out on a good curveball. No runs, one hit, and one man left on base. It's one nothing, Phils. The descend here in South Philadelphia. Big fireworks show planned later on. One nothing, Phillies, in another really good pitching duel here tonight, Andy. Randy Wolf has been pitching very well. Six, seven, eight starts in a row. He has just been dealing, and once again tonight, one hit in five innings, five punch outs, only one walk. D'Amico's done a good job also. Randy Wolf gets the fourth worst run support in the league, and it's happening again tonight. Just 3.5 runs as D'Amico leads it off and takes strike one. And while he's in the game, Wolf is in the game, 2.9. Wow. So. You know, he's had a pitch well to stay in games because they don't score any runs for him. The change up. And he missed with it, one and one. D'Amico, the pitcher out of the nine hole, and then Cedeno and Alfonso. Cedeno, a switch hitter, Alfonso from the right side. One one pitch to D'Amico. It's amazing how many pitchers are getting hits. You get that first gimme right there, and nobody knows it better than the Phil's pitchers, and they keep getting hits. It hurt Terry Adams last night. Two quick outs, and then Estacio came up and got a base hit. Here, Randy Wolf just throws a fastball right down the middle. And this guy has a big strike zone, too. And they hope it doesn't hurt him. It's going to clog up the bases with D'Amico over there, although they are going to hold him on. And Cedeno, one for two. He has the other hit. By the way, that was a good job by Burl to cut that ball off. Sure too. was. There's a base hit. Boy, the pitcher gets on the lead off an inning, and lots of time it's trouble. Get the starter in the stretch. So Cedeno now two for three, and for the second time tonight, the Mets have two on and nobody out. Randy got out of it the first time. That was a change up there. He just got the end of the bat. Bobby was thinking about a quick throw there, but D'Amico read that pretty well. 
hesitates for a second then goes on ahead. Phillies with a long mound conference right now. And they of course are talking about the possibility of a bun here from Edgardo Alfonso with Piazza and Vaughn coming up. Now you have a very slow runner at second base. So I mean if you don't put down a perfect bun you have to think play at third and Wolf is an excellent field. Yep. And Tomas Perez at first. There you go. He and can he, field wherever he is. He's a very good thrower over there just the way Travis would be if he were in the game. We'll see if they think about bunting here with Alfonso and they don't and he swings and fouls a first ball fastball out of play. That'll get Scott rolling back a little bit. Matt Galante. First year as third base coach here. He's a longtime coach with Houston. John Stearns was their third base coach last year. He's now an advanced scout or special assignment scout for the Mets. The ball's on a strike to Alfonso. Fly ball foul down the right field line, slicing towards the stands out of play. He's ahead of him 0 2. Bobby Valentine did not want to take the bat out of Alfonso's hands. Phillies could have walked Piazza and gotten to move on from the left side and also knowing it would be tough to bunt the Miko over so really not to all that surprised that they would swing the bat here. There's Mike on deck. He's 0 for 2. I'm Randy Wolf not really considered a ground ball pitcher. He'd love to get a double play, but he doesn't really have the stuff for ground balls. There's a line drive to center, but Lede is right there, and nobody will advance on this. So that's a big out for Randy Wolf. Keeps the runners right where they are. One out. As he got ahead of Alfonso, and they made a good pitch in on it. He hits it pretty good, but Lede, a good job, reads it perfectly, lines it up, and a strong throw, and especially with the pitcher at second, he's not going to go anywhere. Well, Lede, with a chance he's had to play center field, has done a good job out there. He's run the ball down. I mean, he's not going to play it the way Doug Glanville does and play real shallow and go back on it, because Glanville's been special doing that for a lot of years here. Piazza tonight is grounded to second and popped up foul. Uh oh. That's 3 1. Oh, did he kill that thing? My goodness. He hardly ever swings at the first pitch. And he got a fastball there and just crushed that to left center. 3 to 1, and Dad loves it. We come around third base, make a little. Subtle gesture towards his family. That is Mike Piazza's 35th home run off the Phillies, and he's knocked in 92 runs against him, and here it is. Boy, with this extension, and that ball went a long way. You know, you talk, we talk about him all the time. He's a little bit like Zeal. You know, he, he plays possum a lot on the first pitch. Take a pitch, take yeah. a pitch. In. But the thing is, you get getting guys in scoring position. That's when those guys change. And last time up, he was up there with two outs and nobody on and popped up. This time, boom. And the first firework set off in this ballpark tonight is off the bat of Mike Piazza. Well, back to the leadoff base hit by a pitcher. It's just amazing how many times that will happen. The pitcher will get on to lead off the inning, and bad things will happen. And it happened in the seventh. So Randy Wolf sailing along, pitching a great game, and just like that, it's three to one New York on Piazza's long three-run home run. And that was one of those, no doubt about it. Move on way up in the air to right field. It's carrying well at the wall. It is gone. So Piazza and Vaughn go back to back 
They didn't get it done last time with men on. They get it done this time, and it's four to one. 14th home run allowed by Randy Wolf. And six in the last three games. Yep. Two in the loss to Minnesota, two in the win at Baltimore, and two here. And that one was way up in the air, and it just kept going. I think he tried to get a fastball in, Andy. Tried to. Well, Peyton will bat. He has struck out and lined out, flat out to right. Down low, ball one. A single by D'Amico, a single by Cedeno. They got Alfonso, but then Piazza, three-run home run, and a solo home run by Wolf. And Larry Ball can just look at that lineup card where he's a little bit strapped tonight. He did not want to be behind in this game. He's more than a little bit strapped. There's Big Mo, who's been hot lately. Vaughn now has five home runs in his last nine games. Look at the difference. Wow. The ground ball right to Rowan. Scott with a low throw. And Tomas can't come up with it. That'll be an error on Rowan. It's so used to Travis Lee down there picking those throws all the time, and it's it's hard when you're not used to it. Yeah, well, that was, that was more of a careless throw on Scott Rowland's part. Had a lot of time. He just threw this ball down low in the dirt. Comes up. He's got all the time. That's something you just you, it's tough. I mean obviously he doesn't want to make an error but pitcher goes out there. It's hot. He's thrown a lot of pitches gives up two home runs back to back and it's like OK I got an out. Oh, no I don't. I'm still in the stretch. Or I'm back into the stretch. So John Valentin will bat. He fly to center and popped up. Last time on a first pitch changeup, Mets have scored four here in this inning, lead four to one with a three-run home run from Piazza and a solo shot from Vaughn. And Larry keeps looking at that card <laughs> longingly. A strike to Valentin. Oh, and two. Up there and pitches also. A lot of those three and two counts early have added up. He's at 92 pitches now. Mr. Way wanted two. You see a lot of Mets fans down here as they come down for this series, and they exploded on those two homers. There goes the runner, Peyton, grounded to third. Roland is not going to guess he did. Unbelievable. I guess Valentin didn't get out of the box. I don't know if he didn't get out or wasn't running hard. He should have been a lot closer play than that. It wasn't hit that hard. Really? Once Scotty caught it, it's like, oh no. I didn't think he had a chance in the world to get it. I, I said Peyton. I meant Valentin. I guess he's going hard. It's just not all that quick. What a great play. Unbelievable quick. Jump up and throw a strike to first after he made the air. Here it is again. He did slip a little. Yeah. 
and he doesn't run that well anyway. Just that little slip. And Rollins' brilliant play. And that's the second out. And at second base now, Peyton for Bernitzo for two with a strikeout and a fly ball. And Valentin off the bat had to think he had a single in the hole. Looks like that's what his reaction was saying. Nice play by Mike Lieberthal down and in one and one. Two outs and Peyton at second base. Four runs in for the Mets in this inning, and they have taken a four to one lead. Good game down in Atlanta. Tony Armas and Greg Maddox, one nothing Expos in the bottom of the fifth. Montreal and be on their way up here for that 305 game tomorrow. Pop the breaking ball out of play, two and two. Or one and two. Piazza's home run, by the way, his 16th and Vaughn his 10th. You mentioned Vaughn has been hot with five home runs now in his last nine games. And they've been pounding him in pretty well in this series, but that ball just not in quite enough, and he got it way up in the air and it just kept on going. Breaking ball, and Burnett stays alive, fouls it back. Just how far Larry Bow is going to go with Randy Wolf. Only the Rollins due to lead off next inning. Only number two hitter in the lineup. Drops down and misses with a fastball, two and two. Yeah, and we already talked about the lack of extra men that he has today. And Randy Wolf drops down here, throws that fastball off the plate. Conceivable to see a pitcher have to pinch hit tonight, depending on how this game goes. Struck him out on a high fastball, but major damage. Four runs. Four hits. Three run home run by Mike Piazza. Look at that expression as he crushed that thing. And then Mo Vaughn's tenth of the year. Have to try and get back in this one now. They're down four to one. A lot of time to go in the sixth inning. D'Amico has pitched great here tonight. He has really been shaky. He hasn't won a game since May. Three losses, three no decisions. Last win, three to nothing at New York on the 26th of May against Florida. But the Phillies with just one run on five hits tonight. All singles. Jimmy tries to bunt his way on and fouls it. It'll be Rollins out of the two hole, then Bobby Abreu and Pat Burrell. Jimmy tonight has grounded his second and hit a bullet his last time up and Mo Vaughn just reached down snared it and turned into a 3-6-3 double play. We were kidding around that that ball caught Mo. Mo. He didn't know he had it. Ball low one and one. D'Amico coming off an 11 to 5 loss against the Yankees. The other day. Look out, fouled off right over us and back down into the stands. <laughs> Your good buddies have a little chuckle at you. Yeah. Well, Luke saw us duck. Rollins to right field, pretty deep back it goes off the wall and in play. Jimmy coming around second. He's on his way to third. He'll have a stand-up triple. And he finally got one over Bernitz's head. Well, he keeps trying to play long ball. This time he gets it just enough. Bernitz jumped. I think he had, his glove was high enough. He just jumped to the side of the ball. Tries to come inside. And watch where Bernitz jumps. The ball is actually, his glove was at the same height as the ball. It was just to the side of it. Jimmy Rollins takes over the league lead and triples now with seven.
Well, the Phillies have a run out there. They can get in easily. They want more, obviously, as they're down by three, but that's a good way to start a comeback. Pence will play the infield back for Bobby. And New York gets the bullpen up quickly on this hot night. David Weathers starts to throw. There he is. One and O to Abreu. Two and whoop. It's a strike. Sorry. Bobby thought it was a ball two. One and one. Fastball away. Close. Tim McClellan, the home plate umpire tonight. One and two. Bobby's taking a couple swings tonight where it looks like he's swinging underwater. A little later. Looks like it. That yeah, just tells you something about D'Amico's breaking ball and changeup. That's gone. Bobby Abreu, a long one to right. Two run home run is seventh of the year. He didn't swing underwater on that one. He must have put some floaties on. <laughs> And all of a sudden, just like that, triple bomb, and it's 4-3 match. Maybe he was setting him up. Because Amico tried to come in with the fastball, and boy, oh boy, did he turn on that baby. See, Piazza sitting inside. Ooh. He, did, he wasn't late on that. Boy, did he throw the head. Uh, no doubt about it. That's what Bobby Abreu can do on him. He hasn't hit a whole lot of home runs this year, but man, when he turns on one, he can kill it. Those people are pretty happy out there. So, the Phillies give up three, but get two right back. And there's the home run ball. These little kids have it out there in the seats. Somebody caught it and gave it to them. Wow, isn't that neat? Here's Burl. Place to go nuts if he hits one. Takes ball one outside for D'Amico. That's home run ball number 14 on the year. Breaking ball. Low. 2-0 to Pat. Who has singled and scored and struck out on a curveball. Burrow with 12 home runs at 37 runs batted in against the New York Mets. In just a little over two years. Strike call, two and one. Perfect pitch, I guess, on the outside corner. Atlanta, by the way, is just taking a 3-1 lead over Montreal. Here's the pitch. Out it back, two and two. The on deck batter is Scott Rowland. But Amico staked to a four to one lead. All the momentum on the side of the Mets as Weathers continues to throw. And the Phillies have just stopped that momentum real fast with a triple and a two run homer. Inside three and two. Stayed away from him in this hole at bat and then tried to bust one in and didn't get the call. Didn't miss by much. Oof, man. No pitcher in the world doesn't want that one. Here we go, three and two to Pat Burrell. Look out, folks, that could hurt you. <laughs> Boy, he hit some wicked fouls. Got a little out in front of that one. That guy has the ball. He probably got it on the rebound. When the Phillies hostess has come down, make sure he's okay. Three balls, two strikes. The pitch. Fly ball. Deep left field. Fair and foul. It is gone. We're tied at four. <laughs> oh, boy. He said it, Wills. If he hits one, this place will go nuts. They're going nuts. There's some Burl fans up there, Andy. And a lot of other ones standing up in yeah. this place. And what a night. To talk about a night for fireworks. Boy, we're having them right now. 
This fifth inning is full of bombs. Pat Burrell's 21st of the year, a towering home run. The only question was, would it stay fair? And it did. I think it hit off the 500 level. Here comes Charlie Huff out. Goes right to the home plate on fire. I guess he's going to make a double switch. So that'll do it for D'Amico, who goes five plus. Stake to a four to one lead in this inning. Phillies come back with triple by that guy, Jimmy Rollins. Homer by Abreu. Homer by Burrow. New ball game. 21 home runs, 60 RBIs now for Burrow. And 13 home runs against the Mets. Piazza kills the Phillies, and Burrow kills these guys. He tries to come back inside. This time, Burrow. I mean, that ball's inside. There's very few guys. Uh, Gary Sheffield is one of them. I, mean, I know I'm putting him in some pretty hefty company because he's only two years young in the big leagues. But Pat Burrell can get pitches inside and keep them fair. I he just missed that MAB sign. Wow. You saw it went in the seats. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. How can he keep that ball fair where it was? He did, and we're tied at four, and we got us a heck of a game ball. We'll be right back. New York Mets brings Ray Ordonez into the game to play shortstop and bat ninth. And the new pitcher batting in Valentin's spot in the six hole is David Weathers, the veteran. Well, they're going to call on David Weathers, try and get some sanity back to this inning for the Mets. He's done a good job for New York out of that bullpen. Well, the Mets fans were going nuts in the top of the inning. Now the Phillies fans having a great time here as Bobby Valentine looks on. First pitch to Scott rolling inside a fastball ball one. Sees that momentum swing a little bit. And that's you now Will Burrow to me. I mean he's one of those guys that you, you you'll, you'll come to the ballpark to watch him hit. Scott rolling a base hit and maybe more gets a great jump out of that box. He will stop. Nice play by Peyton to get it back in as Scott's on with a hit. But he's one of those guys that really you want to see hit. Scott rolling another one. He's just getting so hot right now, swinging the bat so well, and he gets a breaking ball from Weathers. Peyton does a nice job. He's got a big turn, and once he sees Peyton catch it, that's when he puts on the brakes. But he doesn't slow down until that. That's got to make Scott feel good, and really. Throwing some numbers up there before he heads to the All-Star game on Tuesday. He said 319 in the month of July. His career. There he goes, and Marlon fouls it off. Looked like they were playing hit and run. It might have been. You know, Larry Ball wants a lead, Andy, as we mentioned. Uh, he is very short off the bench tonight as Vuk goes through the signs again. And he can't do a whole lot late in the game, so he wants a lead, and I think that's what he's thinking right there. Maybe he could get a first and third out of that and get a lead. The other thing, Marlon, trying to get him going. A lot of times you get a guy going with the hit and run. Marlon 0 for 2 tonight. Infielders are moving, and the thing about the hitter doesn't have to try and do anything but put the bat on the ball, hit it on the ground somewhere, and sometimes they'll get a hit out of it. Look at the sweat dripping off of David Weather's brow. Really? Off of the brim of his hat. Unless he did what you do. He doesn't have to. <laughs> Inside. I want to follow up on something you said about Pat Burrow. When I was a kid, we go to Connie Mack Stadium, and when Richie Allen had another bat, it might be five to one, it might be nine to one. You didn't care. You waited to see him yeah. hit, and that's what Pat Burrow's going to be like in this town. I don't. I don't think there's any question about it. He's the one guy. I mean, he. I can't wait till he comes up to the plate. One ball and one strike. Marlin down the line. It's a fair ball. See if it gets past the box seats. It hits off. Scott Rowland being waved around. He'll score. Phillies lead five. The four on a double by Marlin. What that gets his fans, this, his fans going. What an electric inning this is, top and bottom. Now Scott Graham and I were talking before the game that he was saying, "I wonder if I could figure out our record when we have crowds over 40,000." As Marlin hits this ball right down the line, it caroms right there. Doesn't hit the fan. Look like a fan tried to grab it. So Daniel comes in and makes a strong throw, but Roland going hard the whole way and. They get the lead. That's one thing you don't have to worry about, Scott. The only thing Bukovic has to worry about with Roland is can I stop him if I have to? Or make sure I get out of his way. Yeah. In case he takes a deep turn. Now, Valentine, the Mets don't know what hit him right now. A long way to go in this game, but wow. That 
home run is charged to David Weathers, of course, who gave up the hit to roll, and now the double to Anderson. He throws Lieberthal a slider. Marlins 17th double of the year and his 24th run batted. And Phillies with their second lead of the game now. They led one to nothing. They now lead 5-4. And they get the bullpen up. There is Serda. Jamie Serda gets up. Lieberthal's trying to hit that ball to the right side. You can see him drag the bat through the strike zone and not able to do it again. And now he's in the hole 0 and 2. You can see the way that the swing he's taken there. That is not a typical Mike Lieberthal swing. They, they have a sign for that if they want to get him over. Randy Wolf. Now the pitcher of record on the plus side. And Lieberthal will get him over. Ordonez is going to have to go to first. Nice job by Mike with two strikes on him. And good base running by Marlon Anderson to get the third. One out. That's what it's all about right there. Break the ball. He goes out. Just wants to put the bat on the ball with two strikes. Pulls it to the shortstop, but it's not hit hard. A high hopper and a good read by Marlin to get the third with less than two outs. Let's bring the infield in. Mike Lieberthal gets the job done, and there's an extra run right now for the Phillies. If Tomas can deliver. Randy Wolf is in the on deck circle. Mets got four in the top of this inning. Phillies have come back with four, and this big crowd is having a good time watching baseball. Phillies did not have a squeeze on. Uh, it looked like <laughs> they pitched out. Look at look at. I don't know if Tomas was trying to dig or what. Well, yeah, I mean, Vuk's looking at him like, what was that for? Maybe Tomas is trying to dig him. He, he, they call that a strike. Huh? No, now they're changing it. Yeah, because he did not bunt no. at that. They put a strike up on the board, but he certainly did not bunt at that. One and zero. Oh. They pitch out again. You know, and that's I don't. I, I thought I was going to say maybe it was a dig. I don't think it was a dig by looking at the replay the way Tomas went and then held the back back. Maybe he saw the runner wasn't coming, but that probably made the Mets think, hey, well, they are going to try and squeeze. Now you see Doug Glanville's tucked in the corner there to pinch hit, and the Mets. They're going to figure here, well, we're going to get Wolf out of the game no matter what we do and make the Phillies beat us out of their bullpen. They figure Larry Ball will hit for Randy Wolf here. And let's see if he does. And he will with Doug Landville because he's not going to have that many shots tonight, as we mentioned, with a short bench. And he's got a shot for a run here, Andy. Yeah. Well, also, Randy Wolf pitch count, I believe, is over 100. So. And you're going to have to take him out after the next inning anyway. So you might as well do it now or you got a chance to get some more points. And if you're going to and if you're going to use an extra man, you know, try and use him in a spot yep. where he might get some, as you say, some points out. I like that expression. Sound like Tom <laughs> McGinnis or Mark Zumoff on a Sixer game. <laughs> well, Randy Wolf's line, 100 pitches on the button. And he is the pitcher record. He's got a. W looking at him in the face right now. Got to be happy about that after having no run support. David Weathers does the old step off, look to third, back to first, no movement by the Phillies runners. And Larry Boss yelling that that was a balk. And McClellan saying, no, get back, you can't argue on it. And no call by the third base umpire, Brian Rungi. And Bo says he went home though. That's <laughs> McClellan saying no, he went to third. And Bo says, gosh darn. Doug Glanville in a big spot here. Slider for a strike. 0 and 1. Phillies with runners at the corners, four runs in and one out, and they lead by one. We are only in the sixth inning. Marlin at third. Tomas Perez at first. And he steps off. Oh and two. David Weathers will throw almost all sliders, especially when he's in trouble. One through one there to get his second strike. Here's the box that Bo went. And boy, I tell you what, and I can see why Larry Bo is arguing. You see where his foot came down. 
That was almost straight to home plate. Now you did that move a lot, and you have to step towards third. You have third. to step to third, and he did not step towards third. Here's the 0-2. Grounded up the middle. It's through for a base hit. Marlon Anderson scores. Tomas Perez stops at second. And Doug Glanville gets a big pinch hit RBI. The Phillies lead by two. And they're still cooking here in the sixth inning. Weathers got his ground ball that he wanted. But right up the middle and out of the reach of Ordonia is at shortstop. And if he can't get it, I don't think anybody's going to. I don't know if that's a sinker he tried to get in or what, but he gets just enough just past the diving Ordonez, and they get a two run lead out of it. Yeah, I think it was a fastball, I and mean, we talked about all the sliders that he throws. And here comes Charlie Huff again. They have a left hander up in the bullpen. That's that Jaime Serda, the guy we were talking about. Young kid just up from the minors with a nasty breaking ball. The Phillies have sent nine men to the plate now. Right, they batted around. And Valentine will make a pitching change here. He's going to bring the left hander in. Back with more after this. Oh, given the, the tie to Philly, gave the Phillies a tie with his home run after Bobby Abreu hit a two run bomb. And after that, Scott Rowland singled, Marlon doubled in the run. And it's just been all Phillies this inning as Jamie Serda comes into the game. Three games, three innings pitched, has not allowed anything. He's got five punch outs. Saw him in the game on Sunday. He came in in that uh, blowout game against the uh, Yankees, Andy, and he has a nasty hook. One of those knee lockers. So that's probably why he's getting all these strikeouts. He also throws a changeup. There's Bobby Abreu. So he will probably see this guy. Bobby Abreu with a big two run home run after Jimmy Rollins let off with a triple. Boy, the Mets had all the momentum going into this inning when Mike Piazza hit the three run homer. There's Weathers out of the game after retiring just one batter. And then Mo Vaughn following with a home run. But this huge crowd, a lot of Mets fans, many Phillies fans, and fireworks fans who might become baseball fans after a game like this. Really? And a young fan. They are seeing some game here tonight. Some in it. Eight, nine runs scored in this inning. Four by the Mets, five by the Phillies. Everybody's liking it. And she's been a fan for a long time. Here comes Ricky. Lede is one for three tonight, and he will face the left hander Serda with two runners on base. Tomas Perez at second, and Doug Glanville with that pinch hit on at first. And the young left hander from Fresno, California, six foot, 175 pounder, will work from the stretch. Fastball right there for strike one. Look at this in the sixth inning alone. Ten hits, nine runs, and four bombs. The Rockets' red glare went off early in this inning. Prior to that, one run scored in the first five innings. The ball's a one strike to Ricky Leday. The pitch to him. Look at foul. A lot of play third base on. So Serda comes right in and gets ahead. 0-2 with Jimmy Rollins who started it all on deck. Pretty good fastball. First two fastballs at 91 and 92. It looks like a little short arm. Get ball gets up there pretty quick. This guy was a heck of a prospect for them. Went through three levels last year. A ball at St. Lucie. Double A Binghamton and then triple A Norfolk. Recently made his major league debut. He's ahead of Lede 0 and 2 the pitch. Another fastball. He misses away 1 and 2. Mentioned he has a really good breaking ball and they have him set up for it now. Has almost everywhere he's pitched, he gets a strikeout per inning or more. There it was. And he stayed off it. Brian Rungi agrees. But you can see how sharp that thing is. Three, he'll be 24 in October. Two balls, two strikes on Ricky Lede. The pitch to him. Breaking ball. There's the one. 
I mean, it just freezes a left-handed hitter, and it did him. Two outs. And the first one he threw, he almost went after and held up the ball in the dirt. This one, obviously up higher. Mm. Looks like it start at Ricky and kind of a hanger there, but still it freezes him because it started at him. And now Jimmy Rollins is shot with two outs. As Serda returns, retires the second batter of the inning, or gets the second out of the inning. And now the home plate umpire has something. He picked up Giving something. Giving the ball boy some money. Yeah, he picked something up off the ground there, off the turf, and gave it to one of the Phillies bat boys there. Jimmy Rollins got it all started. He's a 10th batter to come to home plate in this inning. He hit a triple off the wall. He's taken over the league lead with seven of them. They are playing him to pull. He has a huge gap in right center field and real shallow is Peyton really in center. Fastball for a strike. So this young kid's come in and thrown strikes. One and one. There's a look at the base runners and the defenses. You see that pull defense for Jimmy and all that room in right center. He hits one out there. That's another triple. Hard ground ball. Nice play. Ordonez out at second. Doug Landville. Huge inning for the Phillies. They pick up five runs. A couple of home runs. A triple by Rollins. Two men left on base, and they wipe out a 4-1 Mets lead and lead 6-4. Thanks to Andy. Harry will be back in the cell. How does the game time temperature? Randy Wolf out of the game now after six. Mike Lieberthal has an RBI hit. Bobby Abreu, Pat Burrell, back-to-back -back bombs. Marlon Anderson, a go-ahead double. Doug Glanville with an RBI pinch hit single, and Mike Piazza and Greg Vaughn went back to back in the top of the sixth inning. Nine runs were scored in that electric inning. Here it is in the sixth inning with two on and one out. Mike Piazza, boom, the deep left center field. Gave him a three to one lead. Mo Vaughn, a towering home run to right, made it four to one. But the Phillies come right back. Bobby Abreu, a two run home run, that made it four to three. And Pat Burrell keeps that ball fair somehow. He ties it at four. They tack on two more. And Carlos Silva will come on right now. The Phillies with a six to four lead as we go to the seventh inning. Roberto Alomar is going to come out and bat for Joe McEwing. Carlos Silva on the mound for play by play. Here's Harry. All right, thanks, Wheels. Roberto Alomar batting for Joe McEwing. Alomar hitting it. 259, much better hitter left-hander than right. Sitting out tonight because Randy Wolf, the left-hander, is starting. Hitting 294 left-handed, fouls it back up and into the New York Mets telecast booth. One ball and one strike. Keith Hernandez probably flagged that one. There he is. There's a gold glove, Keith Hernandez. Yeah, he got it. This one might have gone to the radio booth where probably Larry Anderson got that one with his good hands. One ball and two strikes to Alomar. Just missed two and two. So Randy Wolf, who went into the dugout in the sixth inning, trailing four to one, saw his teammates come up with a five spot for him. And that's well hit to left center field, and Burrow makes a good running catch. Good jump on the ball. Nice play, Pat Burrow. Looked like that one was going to fall in there, but Burrow closed ground in a hurry. And here's a sinker, and Alomar goes the other way with him. Watch Pat Burrow run it down. Good play, Burrow. So that's one down, and that'll bring up Ray Ordonez. He's batting for the first time. Came in as a part of a double switch. Ordonez hitting at 238.
One strike to Ordonez. Carlos Silvan working here in the seventh inning. Ordonez hits it in the air to right field. Bobby Abreu puts that one away. And that's two down here in the seventh inning. Business person special number four will be against those Cubs right after the All-Star break Thursday, July 18th at 105. Sammy Sosa and the Cubs are in town. Order your tickets for business person special number four, July 18th, 105. Call 215-463-1000. Or online at phillies.com. Roger Sedanio is two for three. Up and in, one ball and no strikes to Sedanio. Bills with a 6 4 lead. We are in the seventh inning. Big crowd on hand here for baseball and fireworks. Sedanio gets his third straight hit. And he is a two out base runner. He'll bring up Edgardo Alfonso. Alfonso has popped up, walked, and lined out to center. Silver pitch here on Monday night, the first game of this series. Faced two batters, and they both got hits. His only appearance against New York. One ball and no strikes. Wants to get this man with Mike Piazza lurking in the on deck circle. In the hole, and that has eyes, and it's a base hit to left field. So he will have to get through Piazza. Two men on base, two outs, and Mike Piazza will come to the plate. He's grounded out, fouled out to Scott Rowland, and smashed a three-run homer to the seats in left center field. Kern Rule is coming out. Silva got the first two men out. And back-to-back -back hits. Larry Boa's bullpen will have to get three innings in here to hold this lead. Dan Plesak gets up in the Phillies' bullpen. I know who he's up for. They want this inning to end right here, but he's up for Vaughn, who's up next. Here's Mike Piazza's home run last time. He hardly ever swings at the first pitch, but he did there, and he killed that thing to left center. Look at the expression on his face after he hit it. And then Mo Vaughn followed with one. The Phillies came back with a tremendous bottom of the inning. There's Mo. Jeff, the Piazza and, Mike and Todd Zeal are a lot alike in that they don't swing at many first ball pitches. There's Plesak. But every once in a while, they'll just get ready for one, and that's what he did last time. You watch Piazza so many times. He just stands there, doesn't even bother to offer. He'll play possible, and then he'll get you. So, you know, they have to be careful here. So here he is with two men on base and two outs. Bills lead 6-4. Low one ball and no strikes. And he was looking at one all the way there, but you know, you just can't be sure as a pitcher that you can just throw a fastball and get ahead of with it. Two balls and no strikes. In the game of momentum switch tonight. Got that one over two and one to Piazza. Looks 
hits it to deep right field, and this ball is in the Phillies' bullpen, and the New York Mets have great regained the lead to second. Three-run home run of the night for Mike Piazza at 7-6 New York Mets. Opposite field home run, and he'll hit a few of those. Wow. It was almost, I was almost about to say Larry Ball wouldn't mind if he walked here so he could bring in Cleese back to face my boy. This just kills the Phillies, too, because they don't have extra men tonight. You know, they got it to the point where they had a lead. Now, look at this, what he does. He waits, waits, waits. It's a sinker. Might not even be a strike. Blown Drops away. the head on it. Nobody, there's nobody else in the league can do this thing. I mean, he's just unique. What a great hitter. What a dangerous hitter. So this will be it for Carlos Silva. As the Mets have taken the lead 7-6, we have another pitching change for the Phils, and we'll be back after these messages. Isak comes in out of the Phillies' bullpen, his 16th game since joining the Phils. He's 1-1, 7-2-7 ERA. He has a save, eight and two-thirds innings, nine hits, seven runs. He has struck out a dozen while walking four. And opponents hitting 257 against him. Left-handers hitting just 182, and he's been able to handle Mo Vaughn in his career. Mo Vaughn lifetime against Plesac, one for 13. Vaughn hit a towering drive his last time up, but just got over that fence for his 10th home run of the year. This is slider, one strike to move on. Just missed. One ball and one strike to move on. That's have taken a 7-6 lead here in the top half of the seventh inning. Two and one, Devon. Bobby Valentine is. See his team take a 4-1 lead, then drop behind 6-4, now back in front 7-6. Snyder just missed. Mike Piazza's been up three times tonight with two men on base. First time up, he popped up. Next two times, he cleared it. In the 3-1 slider, it's a full count now to Vaughn. Piazza's career high RBIs in a game. Seven. And not surprising. Here with the Dodgers. Here? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he loves it here. Yes, he does. Vaughn walks. Lisak kind of looking in at Tim McClellan, wondering where that pitch was. And he thought he had a strike there. And Larry Ball, I mean, you talk about emotional night here, and it's only the seventh thing. This game is going back and forth. Here's the 3 2. And according to the home plate umpire, it's love. Brings on Jay Payton. He has a lifetime against the Phillies, has hit 36 career home runs. And driven in a cool 95. Mm. Towering fly ball into center field. 
Ricky Lede has it lined up. That'll retire the side, but not before Piazza puts the Mets back in front. Three runs on the three-run homer by Mike Piazza. Three hits, no errors, none left. We go to the bottom of the seventh, 7-6, seven, New York. Some the fans trivia quiz tonight. What player was acquired by the Mets when they traded Nolan Ryan to the California Angels? Correct answer, he's here tonight. Jim Fregosi. First Phillies fan with a correct response was Ken Reynolds of Claymont, Delaware. Congratulations, Ken. You're the winner of two tickets to an upcoming Phil's game, and thanks for playing Dodge Stump the fans. There's Jim, who is the assistant to the general manager with the Atlanta Braves, signing some autograph, and what a year he did. What a job he did for the Phils in 93 when they got to the World Series. Right now, the Phillies trying to battle back. Kid left-hander out there who hasn't been in the major leagues very long. Has really good stuff. They do have Strickland throwing in the bullpen, a right-hander. Bobby Abreu was one for three. It was a two-run home run. Now the Phillies, I mean, they got off the deck unbelievably to take the lead and then whack right in the gut again and see if they can come back. This game has been one momentum swing after another tonight. Here's the home run that started for the Phillies. Jeff Tomiko looked like he tried to get a fastball in and he didn't get it far enough in and Bobby just lined it out of the ballpark. Three balls and a strike. The Sarita since his call up from Norfolk. He's pitched three and two thirds innings struck out six and hasn't walked a batter. He's strictly. Yeah, he's up for Burl and, and rolling. Bobby Abreu gets the first walk that Sarah's given up since coming to the major league. So Bobby walks for the 59th time this year. You can see Charlie Huff look over at Bobby Valentine. So you want me to go get him? And Valentine just nodded. And they're going to make another double switch. Another double switch. Timo Perez is going to come into the game. They'll probably go to center field. And that will mean he will lead off the next inning. Jay Payton will be finished for the night. Strickland will bat in the number five spot vacated by Jay Payton. So we have another pitching change. Seven, six Mets will be back after these messages. Seven, six New York leads bottom of the seven. Scott Strickland is the new pitcher for Strickland his 41st game. He has one six loss four three six two ERA 37 in the third innings. 30 hits 15 earned runs. He has struck out 38 walked 17 opponents hitting just 213 against him. Right hander is just 161. First guy he's going to face is Met killer Pat Burrell. This is what Pat did his last time up. Looked like that pitch was in. It's amazing that he could keep it fair way up in the air kept it fair tied the game and that was the last batter I believe that D'Amico would face. Yeah he was he left the game after that. First five innings in this game not much since then fireworks. Well has hurt the mess but he hasn't hurt this guy he is one for nine lifetime against Scott Strickland. And you wonder if it might not be time to try to steal a base for Bobby Abreu. Alan Moore is playing right near second. They're playing Burl to pull. Strickland watches him. Abreu has stolen 14. He's only been thrown out four times. Piazza does not have a good success at throwing out base seals. Strickland throws everything hard too. Fastball and slider. Strickland thinks Bobby might be trying to go. Well, that lead is really bothering him. I mean, you get a lead that big, and that gets a pitcher's attention. I mean, he's got a foot on the cutout. On the turf, I mean. A ball and no strikes to Pat Burrow. Strickland just stares in at McCullough. He thought he had strike one. Five for six off Strickland. Oh, he got a big jump. Good job by Burrow taking the pitch. 
stolen base, Bobby Abreu, number 15. The outs had no chance there. And your point about good, good job by Pat Burrell, you know Bobby Abreu is going to try and steal here. He's on his own. Burrell has a pitch to play with anyway. He's ahead in the count one and oh. He certainly has two pitches to play with, so he just takes it, and Bobby steals it easily. So now Bobby at second base, nobody out, one and one the count to Pat Burrell. How is this one out of play? One ball and two strikes. Now Larry Ball can keep Plesak in this ball game because they have left, left, and Alomar coming up who's struggling right-handed next to him. Well, even though he has a lot of problems, he doesn't have many extra men left. There's one of them, Jason Michaels. They need to get this game tied or better. One and two. Benitez has had a lot of rest now. He has a pitch since Sunday, so you know he could even pitch two innings tonight if they have to, especially since they've used Weathers already and they have Strickland in here in the seventh inning. There's Big Armando. Driven to deep right field, and this ball's off the boards. Bobby Abreu will score, and this game is tied at 7 7. An RBI double, Pat Burrell. Burrell knocks in his 61st run of the year. Both managers going to the water cooler a lot tonight, as this is some game. That makes some baseball fans out of these fireworks fans tonight. He looked like he got a slider out over the plate and didn't try to do too much with it. Kind of like Mike Piazza, when you get a ball away, use your natural power. It was a slider, and he just smoked it the right center. And that'll bring on Scott Rowland. Rowland's two for three. For the Phillies try to regain the lead here in the bottom of the seven. Earl just hits some nuts. Well, he's a Marlon Anderson on deck, a left-handed batter. They do not have a left-hander up in the bullpen. We'll see if they gave Rowland in a give-it-up situation. That's what I'm saying. We'll see if they gave him a give-it-up give, it, give it up situation here. One ball short stop, and Burrell's going to get caught in the rundown. Ray Ordonez to Alfonso. Rowland at first on a fielder's choice. One out. Boy, Pat knows he made a big mistake there. That ball's hit to his left shoulder, and he's trying to make a big play. You see Boa's reaction. Ball's hit to your left shoulder, especially with a guy like Ordonez. Now, he, see, it's hit to his left shoulder, but it's not hit that far. And Ordonez was playing there. That's what you have to know, that he's there. And now Ordonez just gets him in a rundown, and they do a great job with it, and there's no chance for Roland to go to second. When it's hit to the left, left shoulder like that, you can sometimes think about going to third. But you have to go right away instinctively, and you can't hesitate, and you had to know where Adonis was, and that's where Pat made the mistake. Roland takes off, and he's going to steal second base. So he gets in the scoring position. His fourth stolen base. He's only been thrown out once. Again, he got a big jump on Strickland, and it was a good pitch to run. It was a low pitch. Piazza had no chance. Well, he gives Mike Piazza no chance because he uses that big high leg kick. One ball and no strikes to Marlon Anderson. Right off the low pitch, two and nothing. Well, at least with Scott Rowland stealing that base, they have replaced Burrell out there with one out. So they're back to where they would have been yeah. if Ordonez fields a ground ball and throws him out. Now, that make Burrell feel any better after that base running mistake. But he'll learn something from that. I mean, if you're going to go on that play, you can't hesitate. Oh. We'll put Marlon Anderson on here. Set up a double play possibility with Mike Lieberthal waiting on deck. So Mike Lieberthal. Charlie Huff will come out, talk it over with Strickland. Lieberthal, two for three tonight. 
Well, you would think they talk about throwing first ball slider here to Mike Lieberthal if you've scouted the Phillies this year because he gets a little antsy looking for first ball fastball in RBI situations. And what they want is a double play ball. Lieberthal. Hitler's lifetime against Scott Strickland. He is 0 for 4 with a couple of strikeouts. And Mike has to lock into a fastball here. You would think if he throws a breaking ball, you take it and hope you get ahead. What a game. Great game here. 7-7, bottom of the seventh. Scott Rowland at second, Marlon Anderson at first. Big jump at second base. Kind of a base hit to the outfield. Slider. We got it over for a strike. One strike to Mike Lieberthal. Well, it's good, good uh, discipline by Lieberthal, even though it wasn't a great slider. You know, a lot of teams do that with him in RBI situation because they figure he's going to jump at it. There's another slider and he took it low and away. One ball and one strike. Jeremy Giambi is down there with a helmet on the top Where step of the dugout. He was available and oh, Roland gets himself thrown out of third base. He jumped way too soon and Strickland just had to step off the rubber and throw Roland out. Roland was trying to steal third and instead he gets thrown out of third for the second out of the inning. Trying to make a big play and the Phillies are running themselves right out of this inning. So Two outs, one ball and one strike to Mike Lieberthal. Well, Larry Ball wants him to be aggressive, but you have to be smart, too. Missed the slider. One ball and two strikes. Guthrie up the left hander after they saw Giambi appear in the dugout. The Mets bullpen has been much more effective than the Phillies this year. High ball into center field. Timo Perez is there. And that'll retire the side. The Phillies do tie it here in the seventh inning with a run. One hit. No errors and one man left. We go to the eighth inning. We're tied at 7-7. Seven, seven. Timo Perez will lead it off for the New York Mets batting for the first time. He came in as a part of a double switch facing Dan Plesak. One strike to Timo Perez. He said they'll go left left and that of course as Harry said the double switch with Timo Perez. Burnett's on deck and then Alomar would bat next and Alomar not swinging the bat as well right handed. That's why Plesak's still in the game. One ball and one strike to Timo Perez is hitting a 332. Seven seven game here in the eighth inning. Two balls and a strike. It probably feels pretty good. On this warm July third. It's a foul back and out of play. Two and two the count to Timo Perez. Has 
fouls it back. Another one for Keith Hernandez. Nope, off the top of the booth and back down to the lower seats. And a three man booth working over there tonight. Fran Healy, Keith Hernandez, and Howie Rose. Keith got one earlier. High ball into left center field. Ricky Lede is there. Timo Perez is retired. That's one down. And we'll bring on Jeremy Bernitz, who is 0 for 3, is struck out, fly to deep center, and struck out. Now Jose Santiago, who struggled in that game last night, is now up in the bullpen. The fourth batter this inning is Ordonez, who's right hand. Larry Ball, he wants to see police at go one, two, three here. Get a run in the eighth, use Mesa, and hopefully get out of here. <laughs> Lot to ask. Good breaking ball, one strike to Jeremy Burnett's. There's Santiago, who can come back a night after he has a bad game and be okay. You just don't know. One to Burnitz with one out. We're in the eighth inning, tied at seven here at Veterans Stadium. Popped him up. Jimmy Rollins waits. J. Rowe squeezes, and that's two down here in the eighth inning. They'll bring up Roberto Alomar. Alomar came in a pinch hit from McEwing State in the game, flied out to left in his first at bat, as we always mentioned. Right handed, he has struggled this year, hitting just 186 right handed. In a lifetime, just three for 19 against Dan Plesak. strike to Roberto Alomar. Yankees are beating Cleveland again at Yankee Stadium 10-5 even though Jim Tomey is at another home run. He's homered down seven straight games and was left off the all-star team. It might, be left, off, always, might it, be left off the Indians yeah. pretty soon. I don't know it's going to be some players you wonder about that don't make the team. That's going to happen annually. Good pitch, one ball and two strikes. Probably Jones probably has some scouting report. He's got the game notes out there. That's what he has. Same thing we get up here. Fly ball right field by the Abreu. Look at the way that ball is carried. Wow. <laughs> Summertime in the yes. city, Harry. Yes, it is. He got it at the warning track. No runs, hits, errors, none left. We go to the bottom of the eighth. Tied at seven. Seven good pitchers duel there. Roy Halliday and John Perkin. Detroit has a 3 0 lead on the White Sox in the fifth. Moeller just off the disabled list, pitching for the Tigers. Texas 4 1 over Tampa Bay. That game in the fifth inning. A Rod has hit a home run. Rather, Yvonne Rodriguez has hit a home run, the 200th of his major league career. Baltimore and Anaheim, Kansas City at Seattle, Minnesota at Oakland later on as Tomas Perez hits a ground ball to Mo Vaughn. And Perez is retired here in the eighth inning. One down. Jason Michaels will come up and bat for Dan Plesak. Good job by Plesa. Interesting. Brandon Duckworth was down there in the tunnel with a helmet and a bat. And if he'd have gotten on, if Perez had gotten on, Larry Bow would have used Duckworth there to try and bunt him over and save Michaels. But now that he didn't see Duckworth right there putting the bat back, but since he didn't get on, now he has to use up what could be his last extra man except for Todd Pratt. So this is why he didn't want to get in this kind of game. Michaels hitting a 313, two homers. He has knocked in 10, six for 24 as a pinch hitter, including a pinch hit home run.
This is a slider, nothing in two to Jason Michaels. Mesa's up in the bullpen. Larry Bill maybe indicating that he would use Mesa in a tie game. There he is. That's what's probably going to happen if the Phillies don't take the lead. They take the lead, then he's in a save situation. Slider just missed. One ball and two strikes to Michaels. Called out on strikes. Fastball that came back over the plate and was there, according to McClellan. I think Jason Michaels thought it was high. Brings on Ricky Lede is line to center, singled and twice struck out. Slider for a strike. Fastball just missed. One ball and one strike to Ricky Lede. Door breaking ball for a strike. Attendance tonight, 50,396. That's it. One of the extra bases for Ricky Lede is cut off nicely out there by Sedonia, but Lede will go in with a stand up double. Talking about Lede earlier, what a great fastball hitter he is. A low fastball hitter. And he got one there from Strickland. See right there, it's a sinker down, and he can smoke a low fastball. And he does there, and didn't try to do too much with it either. Up Jimmy Rollins. That means the Phillies probably had close to a 10,000 walk up tonight. I think the advance was right around 40 for this game. So big fireworks crowd tonight. Here comes Charlie. Guthrie up with Bobby Abreu on deck. See if they want to turn him around. Yep. Yeah. So be it for Strickland. Buff has made the wave to the bullpen. So we have a pitching change for the Mets. We're in the eighth inning. We are tied at 7-7, and we'll be back after these messages. 50,396, the paid attendance here at Veteran Stadium tonight. Don't forget on Friday night, we have, didn't get a chance to come out for the fireworks show tonight. Another one on Friday after the game against Montreal. As Mark Guthrie takes over for the New York Mets, Guthrie has pitched well. This will be his 36th game, 2-0, a 1-6-4 ERA, one save. 22 innings, just 13 hits, four runs. He has struck out 22, walked seven. Opponents hitting just 171 against him. So the veteran left-hander will be facing Jimmy Rollins with Ricky Lede at second base. Two outs in a 7-7 game. Now Guthrie, as you look at Ricky Lede there with Ordonius and Alamore, he has gotten Jimmy out twice in the series. A ground ball to short, and last night was throwing him changes and splitters and struck him out. So they want to get Jimmy here, but they know they have a base open. And they have a left-handed batter and Bobby Abreu on deck. So Jimmy shouldn't see a whole lot of fastballs. You wouldn't think at least fa a fastball to hit. Jimmy against left handed pitchers started out slowly and he's picked it up since April 30th. Rollins one for four with a triple. Back 
back up the middle, base hit center field. Ricky Lede will score. And the Phillies have taken an 8-7 lead here in the bottom of the eighth. A two-out RBI single, Jimmy Rollins. Well, two of it, two-thirds is done. Plesak got him out. The Phillies got a run. Now, here's the splitter. Look what he throws. First pitch splitter. Hits it off the end of the bat a little bit. It's got all kinds of goofy spin when it hits. And it's not going real fast. And Ricky Lede can run. Got a great jump with two outs and scores. And give Jimmy Rollins some credit there, too, because I think he looked for one of those after what happened to him last night, figuring he ain't going to throw me a fastball after what I saw last night. A smart hitting. Well, Jimmy Rollins has given the Phils a lead here, eight to seven in the eighth inning, and here's Bobby Abreu. Bobby one for three with a homer and a walk. He's knocked in two. He has scored two. Now they're thinking about him running, of course. Ricky Lede has really played well. Big two out double and Jimmy's hit. What a game. Since being installed in that leadoff spot of Florida, Lede has delivered. There's Charlie Huff trying to come out and get time, and McClellan didn't hear him. Piazza didn't hear him. And Lucky didn't balk. Like Weathers did? Huh? <laughs> yeah, like Weathers did, right. You see Mike Piazza went over to him like I didn't hear you. Man. That's Grant Roberts, but he just got up and he's not going to come into the game. But not what they're thinking is, right, base. what they're thinking is they're stalling right now to try and give Roberts some time to face a, a Burl if Abreu keeps this inning going. But that right hander got up late and that's why Huff came out there to just kill some time. Strike to Bobby Abreu. Jose may still be coming in in the ninth inning. Bobby off the end of that bat. He was really quick early in this game with a couple of swings. One ball and one strike. That's a good way to approach a left-hander too, is to get off the end of the bat a little bit, and he's just trying to get it, just get a pitch to hit and put it into play. Two balls and a strike. For 50,000 here tonight, and you know a lot of them came for fireworks, but they're seeing, if not the best game of the year, pretty close to it. A lot of things in this game, been back and forth, back and forth. Now the Phillies have the lead, eight to seven. Oh, he's got him picked off. We'll get him though. Uh-oh. He got him oversliding the bag. If Jimmy had not overslid the bag, you're right, they wouldn't have gotten him. But Jimmy overslides the bag, and that will retire the side. But the Phils take the lead with a run. Two hits, no errors, none left. We go to the ninth inning, Jose Mesa time. Phils eight at seven. Diego behind Jason Simontaki. Kino Martinez is 10th home run of the year. Colorado is 7-1 lead on San Francisco. Jason Jennings looking for his ninth win for the Rockies. Larry Walker is 20th homer. Dodgers in Arizona are nothing, nothing in the first inning. That's Andy Ashby against Miguel Batista. Here, Jose Mesa comes in to try to close her down. Phil's lead 8-7. Mesa appearing in his 40th game. Two wins, four losses, 21 saves. 225 ERA, 40 innings, 30 hits, 10 earned runs. He has struck out 36, walked 17. Opponents hitting 213 against him. And Ray Ordonez will be the first one to face him, to be followed by Roger Cedeno and then Edgardo Alfonso here in the ninth. High towering fly ball, shallow left field. Somebody should get it. Pat Burrell is there. He gets it. 
Ordonez is retired on one pitch, one down. It'll bring up Roger Cedeno. Cedeno is three for four. He has singles in his last three at bats. Pesky hitter for Mesa as well. He is two for three lifetime against Mesa. Got Sedanio and then Alfonso. And then the in the hole hitter is Mike Piazza. That's why it's so ridiculous that Ordoni just swung at the first pitch. But it's great for the Phillies. One strike. To Sedanio. Very happy about it, but that guy has a leadoff man has to get up and do everything he can do to get Piazza up here in the center. So we have to, and what's he going to do? Tie it with a homer? As he thought he saw a pitch he could take out. Huh? Yeah, that's right. Here's a drive into center field, and Ricky Lave is there, and that's two of them. And now it'll be Mesa and Edgardo Alfonso. Bobby Valentine, what a game this has been tonight, though, as far as momentum shifts back and forth, back and forth. Very entertaining. Bills leading 8 7. Mason wants to get this guy and not have to face the guy waiting on deck. I guess. The night, he, the, night the guy on deck has had. Alfonso is one for three with a walk. One ball and no strikes. Scott Rollins guarding the line at third. They also have Jimmy over a little bit playing a pull. Now you see the defense of Marlon Anderson in the outfield. Two balls and no strikes. Now see, this is a big league at bat right here by Alfonso. He's trying to get on and get Piazza to home plate. There it is. There's that career high we talked about with the Dodgers here back in 95. Two and nothing to Edgardo Alfonso. Three and nothing. Wow. Let it come down to this. <laughs> That's what, look at it. Up the tunnel and back. That was a ball? It was on the inside corner, but he didn't get the call. Mace is a little upset with Tim McClellan. So Alfonso walks on four pitches, and here is Piazza. Now they got to go just settle him down and also talk about what happened if Alfonso should break, which is unlikely with Piazza at home plate. I guess All it's right, they agree with how they're going to pitch to Piazza here. I guess it's only fitting that this kind of game will go down right down to Mike Piazza and, Gre and maybe Mo Vaughn. Piazza yeah, two for four with a pair of three run home runs. Low time against Mason. Piazza's three for six with a double and a home run. Just missing inside. He's not getting the inside corner. The 3 0 pitch to Alfonso looked like. And a part of the inside corner in this pitch. And I was inside, I guess. Scott Roll is guarding the line of third. Two balls and no strikes. Big hole on the left side. Well, this Mo is Vaughn is waiting on deck. And then not a great spot to get into. 2 0 to Piazza. Phillies outfielders are all deep. And no extra base defense in the outfield. Three and nothing. 
Islands, Bo Vaughn waiting on deck. Strike three and one. I don't know if Piazza had a green light or not. It's hard to tell. He made me, me no move on that pitch. Three balls and a strike to Piazza. Full count. Big pitch here as the fans are on their feet. 50,000 plus here at Veterans Stadium. The game that boils down to this pitch. Runner will be off. Hook is bad on that pitch. Runner will be off at first. He's throwing him all fastball from this at bat. Would he dare throw something else here? I don't know. That's a good question. I have no idea. I think I would. Well, you might <laughs> fool him, but if you hang it. Yeah, that's why this is a great yeah. game. <laughs> Redding has won their game over Erie 7 1. That Ryan Madsen won his 10th for the Redding Pills. Here it's 8 7 Pills. Two outs, ninth inning. Breaking ball. He's yeah. going to do it. Now we'll see if, if maybe Jose didn't like it and decided not to. See if they go back to it. But he, they think in the same way. Nope. Oh, no, he didn't want it. Last ball in. Yeah. Fuck him out, blew him away with a fastball. Jose Mesa comes in to record the save, and he blew that one right on by Mike Piazza. Mesa records his 22nd save. Pat Burrow with a homer and a double and a single. Three for four. He is our Chevrolet player of the game. As the Phils in a thrilling game here at the Vet, win it by a score of eight to seven. Thrilling is right. Sack will get the win, and Jose Mesa will get the save as the Phillies bullpen, which had struggled this year, outdid the New York Mets bullpen, which had been awesome. And in the game tonight, Harry, where Larry Ball was really strapped. Yeah. No, really down to basically no extra men with Giambi and Lee Hurt. And they win this game. Just a wonderful night here. I'll never forget. One half of the National League starting lineup will be on display at the vet today. And so will an equally deserving star will miss the Midsummer Classic. When Bartolo Colon crossed over Leeds, his spot on.